Opa, pessoal, boa noite aí. Hoje a gente tem aqui presença internacional aqui com, com o mestre Joseph Rivera, né? A gente vai falar metade em português, metade em inglês. Vou <risos> tentar falar, ainda bem que ele entende um pouquinho, né? <risos> Show de bola. Olha aí, Paulo Robson. Boa noite. Good night. Did you, did you know StreamYard? The platform? Joseph, did, did you know about that platform? Uh, I'm sorry. StreamYard? Uh, yeah, it's actually my first time using this platform because I'm used to using Zoom. And oh, else, very nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. I Zoom. use Zoom for training just. Yeah, yeah. For for live, uh, I I like it more. Uh, the the stream art. Ah, I see. I, I see. use it. Uh, it's very best, better than than Zoom. Oh, really? Because Zoom the the security is not uh, not well. No? Oh wow! Wow! I have I have just known that. For yeah, when you don't put. Password, it's a kind of uh, you, you you will have problems. <laughs> yeah, people hack them, enter. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Put the pornography. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really? It's very, the, very, the yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not really that good. Horrible, actually, horrible. Yeah. Yeah, but it's actually horrible. here in the Philippines and Zoom is is a uh, thing uh, for for all the platforms we have. Zoom is more famous nowadays, especially during this pandemic. But, but I think right. StreamYard is better too. It's uh, not complicated, and it's easier to use. I think. Yeah, yeah, much better. Yeah. So let's wait uh, two minutes, and we. Start can be ah uh, sure no problem but oh. I think are, are we live now oh. not yet yes yes okay so we, we are, we are right on now. YouTube and Facebook okay okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how is Brazil right now because I've read lot lots of news about it so are you doing good in Brazil can you repeat please um, are you doing good in Brazil? Because I've heard and I've read lots of news about the about the pandemic. Uh, oh yeah, there? yeah, yeah. Have have some some place that uh, uh, pandemic is very strong. Yeah? Oh, and until now, a place that uh, it's control already. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you are on on. I live in Rio. I live in Rio, and it's okay. kind of control. Yeah. Ah, okay. But, That's good. But uh, people don't care about uh, go go to to beach without <laughs> masks. Oh, really? <laughs> Fall, falling around. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But at least um, it's getting better there in Rio and in the in Brazil as a whole. So it's kind of, kind of. Kind of. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And and they are in Philippines. Yeah, uh, we are still in quarantine, but uh, this time we are on. Um, you are on Cebu, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in Cebu City, and the condition now here is better than like a month ago, where it was uh, so dangerous to go outside. But now it's better. It's oh. better, and nice, uh, we nice. are on. Yeah, we are on um, qualified. Uh, quarantine so life is better we can move better than sure. before oh very nice yeah oh alex is my classroom oh yeah he said alex. he said goodbye to you 
Good good night, yeah. Good, uh, good night. Yeah, good night for all. Good night for all. <laughs> mm. So he was once your student. Yes. Okay, that's good. In my community of statistics. Mm, statistics. Oh. It's good. Good. It's a very, very nice place to to learn. Yeah. It's a ecosystem, do you know? To learn because uh, we have uh, exclusive groups when you can mm -hmm. make networks. Yeah. With yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, good professionals. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you have your meeting regularly? Yeah. Yeah. We have your exclusive exclusive group to to make it uh, to resolve the dubs the dubs of of the class né? yeah yeah okay. and uh, it's all all the day yeah all the day long we we are together okay hey, that's good yeah it's a nice project mm -hmm. So we will take uh, 80 minutes, okay? For people I, is arriving of, of the work, jobs, okay? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm free and I can just <laughs> stay for long. It's Saturday here. Okay. Did you share for your friends? Yeah, I did. But I think, oh, yeah, I did. Nice. But, yeah, but um, this time it's, it's really very early it's... in the morning. <laughs> very... <laughs> I think all of them are sleeping, so they cannot. Very, very... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I was praying to you a cup to to make your life worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You you wake up uh, 4 a.m. all the days. I'm sorry. I'm what? Every, every day, every day. Do you do you wake up uh, uh, for four hours? For four hours? Uh, not really. Not really. 4 a.m. Yeah. Not not really. Yeah. Oh. We are grateful about you wake up. <laughs> for taking a live with us, it's very uh, nice. No? We we appreciate it, that. Yeah, I really do appreciate it too for inviting me. I think um, it's a good thing and also an opportunity for me to share and talk with the other people from the other side of the world. Uh, I think it's good. Very it's nice. Good. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. But I think uh, the community in Brazil is doing good for sharing and cultivating a culture of data. Can you repeat, please? I think your community in Brazil is doing a very great job in cultivating a culture of data. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we are uh, not so evoluted for uh, uh, of, of the, the other countries, but uh, we have uh, a lot of good professionals, yeah. That's good. That's work that's with data. Yeah. All right. yeah. So I think that's a very great Great. Start. great. Oh, so on, on start that we have a lot of uh, professionals qualified. Mm, a lot okay. of uh, authors of the books as you, yeah. Oh, it's so good. So you 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 uh sent the the link of of your book to we we put you on this describe yeah so i'm going to yeah. okay so okay. Wait. uh mm -hmm. i i put the the linkedin 
uh, Skype, mobile, YouTube channel, but the book you didn't send. Can, yeah. you, can you send for us your yeah, book? Sure, sure, sure. Your link? Yeah. yeah. I think I forgot to do that before because I usually I do not put the link of my book there. Okay. So, but I'm I'm finding the link. Where is it? Okay. Rafael Muniz. Hello, guys. Good evening. <laughs> Good morning for the Joseph. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It, it's 6 a.m. there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 6 o'clock in the morning today here. My book is available on Amazon. Very nice. So we have your private chat. Do you know? Besides... Right. Yeah, yes, yes, I could see it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Very nice. I will send to all. Yeah. Can I just go to the restroom first for a while? Uh, just a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I just excuse for a while? Okay, okay. No okay. problem, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> My English is poor. Sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> So, in, so in, in in Latin America, only Brazil is speaking Portuguese. I'm 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 curious. Africa too. Uh, have you some some continents that speak Portuguese too? Okay. Por Portugal, Africa. But only some part of Africa. Yes, Portuguese. Yeah. The, So we can we can start. Ah, sure, no problem, right. no problem. Okay, no problem. okay. So it's a big pleasure uh, have you with us. Yeah, uh, you sent me a, a message on LinkedIn. Yeah, about your channel, and I liked it too much. Your job. Yeah. Oh, and thank you, you so much. Yeah. Uh, we we say thanks for for you have having you with us. So uh, I want you to, to to introduce yourself to us humbly, and uh, <laughs> please let's talk about machine learning. Okay, oh, sure, sure, yeah, sure. yes. 
Okay, so um, my name is Joseph Rivera. I, I live in Cebu City, Philippines. And I've been doing this kind of job for, I think it's um, four years now. Yeah, but then I was not actually exposed too much to data and I never had any formal training um, to for data science because first and foremost, my major, my when I was in college or university, I did not study statistics. I did not study math. So my field was different. <laughs> Since yeah, since I <laughs> I studied I studied um, literature, then I also studied law, right. and yeah, and then uh, and uh, we just once upon a time a friend uh, gave me a book, and then he asked me to read this book, and it says uh, the 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 new skill that you're going to learn for for this century, so I got interested, and then I I studied um, data science. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it was first analytics, analytics, and then yeah. uh, I started. It changed the name all the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, b b before, a uh, few years ago, I think it was uh, three years ago, data science was not very famous then. So it yeah. was analytics, data analytics yeah. uh, was famous. So I I studied it. Not I just shared... uh, all, all, all the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, then after, uh, uh, I think it was uh, two years ago too, then the name became different. There was yeah. this kind of revolution, I think, uh, when it comes to data, how data should be approached and how data should be mined for us to get some insights. Then All machine right. learning uh, came into existence. Though it was famous in maybe in some other countries, but in the Philippines, it was not yet. And it was not mainstream. Not everybody knew what it was and how it should be used and um, the benefits that we could get from it. But then I, here in the Philippines, especially in Cebu, I, I tried to make some kind of events, events oh. for training of data. Very uh, nice. So. Yeah, Riva Felix said that uh, that's so nice. I'm a linguist trying to move to NLP. Oh, that's good. That's good. I think yeah. I can really relate to him because I'm all, I I'm also a linguist. I, my, my major is uh, English, so I studied English education. So now actually I'm you really put to yourself, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was really a very long journey and uh, just like a going zigzag. And so this time, what I do is um, I just would like to have some kind of training and sharing, of course, writing a book and doing some kind of studies too. And hopefully, uh, maybe in the future too, I could also share my study machine learning project with with you. Uh, it's it's really very, um, uh, it's a great honor to share some of my works with you guys. Very nice. Yeah. So we, would you like to share your slides? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, nice. Sure. sure. You can put on share screen. Yeah. So, okay. Share. Oops. Do you find it? Yes, yes. So okay. I'm going to have, oops. No problem. That application, for, okay. So it's here. So, there's a second. Sorry? There's a second, please. Okay, okay, sure, sure. No problem. Okay, nice. It's okay now? Can yeah, I... we, are, we are seeing your slides. Okay, so. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? So yeah. this time, so I'm, I'm going to start now. Okay. Okay, so so my topic today is not actually that very hardcore. What I mean is uh, it's not going to be very technical, but it's just um, something that everybody can understand easily. I've chosen. I've chosen something like this because I think this is what we need because most of us would 
would just like to appreciate the word machine learning and the idea behind it, but we don't know how to use it effectively. Okay, so, so welcome to my topic and to my presentation, how to use machine learning effectively. So to start, okay, okay so machine learning uh, has been giving us headway because it has been used for many purposes. So we have here, of course, we know that we have uns unsupervised learning, we have supervised learning, then we have reinforcement learning. And so for example, uh, super supervised learning is used for um, diagnostic, uh, for customer retention, for image classification, then we also have identity fraud detection. That is, for example, if we would like to have the classification, and if we would like to have, um, for if we would like to use regression, then we can do um, market forecasting, estimating life expectancy. So these are just some of the uses of, of machine learning. So many companies have been using machine learning for um, operation optimization to improve their forecasting and even to anticipate demands. Okay, so I just would like to share with you some statistics. So the global right. machine learning uh, market was valued at $1.58 billion. This is US dollars in 2017. And then it is, it is also expected to reach 20.83 billion in 2024. So the growth rate, uh, the growth rate, Express or what the numbers, yeah. yeah, exactly. The compound annual growth rate is 44.06%. That is between 2017 and 2024. So this is actually a very big market. And I believe it's going to really increase beyond 2024. Okay, so this this kind of research also projected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 42.8%. That is from 2018 to 2024. So the global machine learning market will be worth 30.6 billion US dollars in four years. So we have here, um, hardware, software, and then, and then services, which would be the the main the main points for the global growth of the machine learning. So they would they would be the focus. And also, uh, Tractica uh, predicts annual global AI software revenue will grow from 10.1 billion in 2018 to to 126 billion dollars by 2025, and its growth rate would be 43.41%. Th that's quite high. Yeah. Yeah, and then also sure. Stanford, uh, Stanford in University's Institute of Human-Centered Artificial Intelligence also, also conducted its study. And these are just some of the key findings. So the global learning market is going to grow from 7.3 billion in 2020 to 30.6 billion in 2024, which is a 43% annual growth rate, which is compounded. And one in 10 enterprises now uses 10 or more applications or AI applications like chatbots, the process optimization, and even fraud analysis, which lead a recent survey stop use cases. Then 83% of IT leaders say, Artificial intelligence and ML or machine learning is transforming customer engagement and 69% say it's transforming their businesses, see? So with these situations happening around us, then we, we can really say that the future is in artificial intelligence. So machine learning being a part of artificial, artificial intelligence really could lead us to more opportunities. So as you could see here, uh, machine learning applications top the AI finding worldwide, which is also seconded by machine learning platforms. Then um, the video recognition is really at, at the bottom. But if you're going to look at the numbers, these are billion dollars or US dollars, then we could really say that more and more companies are really putting a big chunk of their investments in machine learning. So. Uh, business across industries, as what we've seen, have been using 
machine learning and they found out that it's an effective it's effective algorithm frameworks and techniques have been solving their problems it could be business it could be um um for the good of the public it, it could be for the government okay so so this time um it has many uses and our opportunity for machine learning is actually very great. And uh, during this pandemic, actually here in the Philippines, uh, the growth of machine learning, artificial intelligence has been growing, especially during this pandemic because people are stuck at home and we could not go outside. Our mobility is very much controlled or restricted. So the use of machine learning the use of some other applications too have been very much effective for us to continue our business, for us to continue some of our personal transactions, like for example, going to groceries, um, ordering some food and many more activities that we used to do. But only that this time we are at least more restricted. I don't know actually what, what's going on in Brazil, uh, if you could give me some ideas later on, but that that's how we use machine learning here in the Philippines and even um, some other applications to at least mobilize us and make our life a better or easier during this pandemic. For so sure. we could, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we have a lot of momentum for machine learning because we've gaining lots of tractions about it. We've been, we've been having lots of um, investments so that machine learning, artificial intelligence would be having more headways in our day-to-day um, -day lives. So despite this kind of momentum, there are actually a lot of organizations that still struggle how to use machine learning they may know simple machine learning algorithms, but the problem is that they do not exactly know how to use it, how to optimize it for better return of investments, for better results, not only for, for the aspect of business, but also in the aspect of day-to-day -day lives of, of, of the people. So we are talking here of the social benefits of machine learning, okay? so. Now, um, we're going to talk about the, the different tips so we could use machine learning more effectively, okay? So, All right. so far, it's okay? Or do oh, I speak yeah. fast? No, it's, it's okay. Very it's okay. nice. Okay, thank you so much. So, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to look at our data. Okay, data can be in so many forms. They could be in numbers, they could be in pictures, they could be in words, they could, they could be in, in oral, they could be in sounds, they could be in uh, uh, some other forms too that we maybe we still don't know. So it's, it's actually very important we got that we are going to look first at our data. So it means that we're going to examine our data. So how to do that? Okay, so preparing our data for training, uh, really takes time and most likely we're going to make some kind of mistakes. And this really entails as much time and most often this could waste our time, our energy too, and our, uh, our resources because we also invest some amount of money for us to, to gather data from different sources. So yeah. it's not that easy, it's not that easy to to gather data. So, so when you have the data up on hand, you have to really examine what is it, the nature, its nature, and how how one aspect of the whole data set can be different from the others. So as you could see there uh, in the pictures above, you could see different colors. So we have the light blue, uh, um, darker blue, and then at the center, you could see something that is very different. So just like that, in examining our data, we should not just go directly to tweeting data as a whole, but 
of course, we're going to have it piece by piece and examining which one is really very different. So, um, of course, everybody knows that it's what we call outlier or something that is very different from the group. So, with that said, this kind of or this part of your data should be, of course, uh, taken from the remaining part because they could suggest a different form of trend. They could suggest a different behavior, which is of course worthy of our attention. Maybe later on we we could we could um, delve deep into that because that would give us more insights how to use it and how to deal with another problem. Okay, so awesome. Yeah, uh, building your model. In, in building your model, you have to review your, your data. You don't have to go to building your model directly without first understanding what kind of data you have. That is the first and foremost step in doing uh, modeling, okay? So yeah. with that, you can just- I totally uh, agree. Me. Thank you so much. You can just uh, discern if your data is in the right form, okay? So what it means is that we cannot just uh, combine numbers and words and then you have your sounds. Of course, they should be treated differently. Um, as to modeling, they should be treated um, in different ways and how you would approach them to, to mine um, the different aspects of each set would be different too. So that's why it's really very important to examine our data, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you, you, you said uh, very important uh point because people uh do modeling without uh making uh, a risk uh, descriptive statistics know about yeah. the data yeah know the yeah. about their relationship then uh, with the the variables yeah so it's yeah. it's the 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 most important thing you know about the data and the phenomena that you I want to 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 predict, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, this is the first step of everything. Okay. Uh, for for a person, just like for example, uh, in the morning, you really have to look fresh. You really have to take a bath for you to be clean. The data is like that. You have to clean your data. Okay. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a second to a tip is that you're going to segment your data. This is what we call actually um, data <laughs> segmentation. So why do we need to segment our data or to slice our data? Because each part of our data or each segment of our data could have its different substructure. So when I say substructure, it means to say that it has its own behavior. So say for example, you have your sales data and uh, in your sales data, you have data from this kind of group group of people. Say, so for example, below uh, 20 years old, then you have certain data uh, for people who are 21 years old to 30 years old, and then then you have your uh, 31 to 40, 41 to 50. So, with this kind of uh, data presented that you have, it's better to to segment them, to slice them into parts because they may tell you a different form of behavior. They have different structure. So data tells us a certain behavior of people. So that's why I think um, today we are uh, gearing into um, the customer-centric customer -centric, uh, uh, culture. So if you could see businesses around us, we are actually uh, always asked that we have to understand how our market how our clients really behave because understanding our clients would help us really understand what kind of marketing strategy that we are going to employ, what kind of um, packaging, what kind of, uh, of, of product, what kind of design we're going to, to, to think of for us to be able to reach every segment of our market. Okay, so. Uh, Very so, nice. So uh, the my my student said that uh, good data, good analysis. Yeah, 
If yeah. you don't clean the data, uh, is garbage in, garbage out, yeah? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's really very perfect. So um, for each slice of your data, then it could have a different model uh, because as what I've said, they would show a different behavior. So it's better to separate one model from the other. Okay, but of course, later on um, in our discussion, we would be able to understand that sometimes we are going to combine some of the data for us to find some kind of space, but we will reserve that later. So also, uh, once you have already um, segment your data, I think it's now better for you to make some kind of decision tree. So for example, we have here our credit rating. Uh, and, uh, this refers the the importance of uh, non -super unsupervised learning, yeah? Yeah, exactly. To, to exactly. segment data. Yeah. And then, so we have here uh, three groups of data. So because we, we've already segmented, that is below 500, that is um, uh, below 700, then that, that's above 800. So I think with this aspect, um, you can understand which one would declare bankruptcy. Then out of that, you can ask yourselves, what, what, what are we going to do with this kind of segments? Are we going to reject the account or are we going to give more accounts? So this is just a very simple way of understanding how we're going to segment our data and how segmentation can really help us in making decisions. So um, our model or clustering algorithms sometimes cannot give us a very good segments for a certain uh, for, for, for a certain market. So this is why it's better to really understand how one segment is different from the others or if there would be some kind of similarity too. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. And, so and, uh, you 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 bring the the occurs yeah to to modeling when you segment yeah exactly 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 it's getting okay. better yeah yeah okay. okay so our third tip is that we're going to use simple models okay why do we need to use simple models okay um having or using lots of variables using lots of features to making our model can be very crucial in training our data or training our model. So we have lots of models to choose from or algorithms to choose from. So you could use supervised and supervised and reinforcement too. But of course, this may depend on um, the structure of your data. This may depend on your goal. This may depend on what kind of data that you have is really very important. Yeah, what kind of so, variables, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So um, simple models are easier to to deploy and they are also easier to, to, uh, to adjust later on. But then uh, the caveat here is what I mean, the, the warning here is that we should not always use simple model if our data, if in our analysis, simple model can never meet our needs, okay? So say for example, when you have a certain model wherein you use um, only one parameter or only one, um, shall we say variable, and it does not fit into the, uh, it does not fit into the future data because when you do that, when you, when you use this very simple model, it would really create a bigger loss so it does not tell you what kind of um, situation we will have in the future. So it means to say that the prediction is very bad. So of course you have to resort into other kinds of modeling or it could be that you're going to add more features in your, in your model to just fit the needs of your, of your prediction. Okay, so, but most often uh, you have to Start with simple model first. Okay. 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 So then our fourth tip is that you have to identify unusual events. 
um, our data set could be sometimes very imbalanced. So when I say imbalanced, um, let me give you an example. Um, you have your sales data. I'm always giving you sales data because I used to be exposed to uh, business data. So for example, you have your sales data and in your sales data, you, uh, you could see that um, 90% of your customers are Brazilian yeah. and 10% uh, we could say that they are Argentinians. So with that, if you're going to look at the numbers of your customers, then it's very imbalanced because the ratio could be one is to nine. 90% is Brazilian and only 10% is, sure. is Argentinian. So with this, if you're going to treat this data as they are um, having their, their their proportion, of course, we could we could really result to something very, very, very bad. And the tendency would be our prediction rate, our prediction would be very wrong because the bias could be very, would be very high. And uh, the case of Argentinian, when, when it is uh, incorporated into the Brazilian situation would be, would be not so good. Okay, so with that, yeah. Sorry? Underestimation, underestimation, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so uh, the best thing to do that is that you're going to have undersampling or oversampling. So I think you know this one already, what undersampling and oversampling is, but let me just um, share with you just a very simple uh, understanding or definition of undersampling and oversampling. So oversampling is that we're going to duplicate our minority. So for example, uh, go back. let's go back to our example. The one is to 9%. So it could be that for one, we could we could say, for example, um, for one person would be equi equivalent to three persons. Okay, that is oversampling. Then for undersampling, um, you could delete some data for the majority. So for example, for uh, for the ninety percent, you could so just give you weight, yeah. Yes, uh, you're going to uh, have it just like, for example, just like for example, okay, uh, just okay. just use the the the, the fifty percent, okay. Very clear. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Or it could be that in some other cases, you could also um, double the weight of your of your uh, undersampled data. For example, the weight would be now becomes. Uh, uh, plus 50%, it's like that, okay? And just to to construct a more balanced data because uh, making this or doing this would be able to counteract the unusual events and the imbalance of your data, okay? So, okay. okay. And our next step is that we're going to combine models, lots of models. So data scientists, or it could be data analysts, I use lots of models, um, lots of algorithms uh, for us to really understand what's really going on in our data. So, but in some cases, uh, when we make our model, this can over generalize. So of course we call that in uh, even stati in, in statistics, uh, in machine learning, we call that overfitting. So if you could see here, we have here three shapes. We have the one which is underfitted, we have overfitted, and we have good fit or robust. So if we're going to follow the first one, which is the underfit, um, we're using here a regression, simple regression. Uh, this is not very flexible because it just goes straight. So it means to say that this is really very biased and um, using this would not be able to give us um, a better understanding of what is really going on in our data because it does not show the proper trend. And also, if we are going to examine number three, um, we could say that um, it's very hard to use this kind of model for our future data it's because if you're going to use it, it really overfits. 
So when I say overfits, it has something to do to do the uh, to do with the too much at attention giving given to the training data. So mm -hmm. if this is the case, when too much attention is giving is given to our training data, it yeah. is not can't generalize. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It, it cannot generalize our future data because it cannot distinguish what is new and what is the future because it just relies on its yeah. trained data, the behavior of the, of the trained data. It's so, learned too much, yeah? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, but then if you're going to look at the middle one, then it's very good fit because we could see that there is generalization, OK? OK. So. Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. So maybe the question right now is that, um, what else are we going to do? So in some cases, or or in, in most cases, we're going to combine some of our models. Because it could be that sometimes uh, this kind of model, for example, our, the, our, our second one may give us the proper prediction, but in some cases that there are some spaces in our data. When I say spaces, it has something to do with the condition in our data that we would like to understand, but our good fit or our robust model cannot give that. that. So uh, with that said, um, what we're going to do is that we can also use this this certain algorithm just to, to to capture this a certain situation and also for this model um we can use that also to capture this this particular um situation so what that means is that you you me ensemble yeah yeah you, you use kind of models to to mix na, the 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 part the the parts of models represent uh, a place, a uh, piece of the 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 project. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, so what we've said uh, just a while ago, uh, in our number one um, uh, tip, uh, there are lots of situations that our data can tell us, but I'm um, not all models can give us all what we want. So one model does not fit all sizes. So one algorithm can just show us this particular behavior, but it cannot give us another behavior, which is uh, a, a very good also, uh, a very good avenue for us to have more insights with respect to what's going on around us, so what's going on with our data. Um, using a different form of model can really give us more manifestations of what action to take as far as a certain condition is concerned. Okay. Okay. Are we good? Are we good? Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Uh, so I I forgot to 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 talk, but uh, we we will certify yeah the people of of the live. And uh, just put the, the name and the mail there on the forms, and we will make a uh, certify them for, for Joseph, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Very nice to make a live with us. Okay, yeah. And also, one more thing, one more thing uh, before, I, before we go to number six, I, I forgot about this one. Um, speaking of models, uh, don't just think it uh, like data science is about building models, of course. It's not that way. Uh, we don't need to really deal into all of the models because first and foremost, data science is not about making models. Um, you have to remember that data science is about solving problems. And it's not just uh, understanding certain model or, or, or using lots of features and then you will just tell yourself, okay, oh, hey, I'm making a great model or I have this very awesome I model that you have to understand. You. So uh, data science does not work that way. Uh, again, I would like to repeat this one. Data science is about solving problems. So don't deal too much with complexity. Exactly. Um, yeah, just to compromise. 
you you don't need the the more complex things yeah you need yes. to to start with the simple things and you yes. will put the uh, uh growing the level yeah yeah exactly 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 okay so that's it uh later on we will have um how to how to do that okay so now let's go to the next one is regarding to deploy our models so this is our tip number six and this, it has something to do with after having your model and after having it validated um, of course you're going to deploy that but uh, most often uh, deployment of your model can take time it could be a week it could be a month and maybe in some cases a certain model could be forgotten to use or for or or or, or for use so um what you're going to do is that especially when you are the one making the model of course you have to really be persistent in 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 deploying your model you have to get your models into production but then uh in deploying your model this is actually in connection to what i've said in number five you always have to think of business objective that is if you are if you are um in business if you are in in government for example you have to think of uh of it has something to do with social benefits so what kind of social benefit your model can give and uh the next thing is that are you able to access your data or or, or your model from time to time um accessing to your model is very important because of course we have to make some kind of adjustment in the process it could be that your model may not work well with this data set so with that you did a fantastic picture you you put the the crisp dm on a on a a, a pipe uh pipe <laughs> pipeline on a pipe you put the the crisp dm in, in form of uh, of a pie yeah yes 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 <laughs> exactly very exactly. nice very nice That's nice but then again the most important thing is that you have to really understand the question the business question or um the government question behind your model okay because the problem is that when your model really entail lives say for example you are in a medical field and you're working with data that really affect health and lives it's going to be very dangerous it's very crucial if um, we are not going to understand what is really the question behind it. So also, if you are in business, if you don't understand the question and then you just deploy the model, then it would entail your losses. It would, in some cases, when you're working with a big companies, it would um, it would really entail losing million dollars. Yeah. Or um, what, what's the currency of Brazil? Is it uh, dollars or? You, you you don't uh, uh know just the the modeling about uh, mathematics yeah you you yes, need yes. to know the the business to make a uh, a profit solutions yeah, yeah, yeah and exactly. uh, to represent the the reality yeah exactly 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 and also um during this part too oh, it's very important to work with other people in your department so you have to work with your IT guys. Why we have to work with our IT guys? We have to um, also talk to with data engineers because they are the ones who would help you to make your um, data data um, in uh, um, data mart. Okay, uh, this is where you store your data. Um, so storing your data or even the output of your model is really very important because it would help you to monitor what's what's the the development of your model so that's why uh, working with this kind of people um is really very important uh, for better um results of your model or maybe adjustments adjustments later on or maybe at the moment you have to make some adjustments so that's it very nice okay and then of course our seventh tip is that we're going to tune the model. So this is in connection to number number um, six. So uh, what do we mean when we say tuning? 
So it's actually uh, maximizing our model so that it would really perform better. So the performance here of a model has something to do with um, avoiding overfitting. And at the same time, we're going to avoid uh, underfitting. OK? And so, it shows the importance of uh, monitoring, yeah? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, so with this also, you have to really understand uh, different hyperparameters. So when I say hyperparameters, these are something that really work in your data, but it, it is found outside your data. So for example, you have your uh, learning rate. Um, when you make prediction, for example, especially when, I don't know if you're familiar with um, gradient descent. Uh, having a gradient descent is um, very important when you make uh, models, especially when you make your predictions. So the, 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 the question is that, how are you going to use a certain learning rate in such a way that the bias would be, would be low? and the variance is not that high. Of course, we cannot avoid the variance and, and the bias because they are there always in your, in, uh, in your model, okay? But then we can just uh, minimize them in as much as possible. So that's why understanding it's how- yeah? It's a trade-off. Yes. Sorry? It's a trade-off, the bias and the, the variance. Yeah, the yeah, bias exactly. And the variance. Yeah. Yeah. That's a trade-off. That is actually the trade-off. Okay, so what are we going to do then for us to be able to tune our model? Um, I believe you are already familiar with this. We're going to use grid search. So what do we mean by that? We're going to test our model using the different combinations of different param hyperparameters. So there could be a lot of hyperparameters that could be seen in your data. Uh, Hyperparameters, of course, uh, are not the same for all data. So the the criteria of your hyperparameters would depend on um, a certain data that you have. So for this particular data, uh, we have this hyperparameter. For this kind of data, we have a different hyperparameter. So uh, it's a case-to-case -case basis. Okay, so that is why tuning the model is is uh, is not a hard and fast rule. So there is, no, there is no rule of thumb for us to tune our model. Uh, so for this, we're really going to um, uh, test our, our model. So again, and how to do that, we're going to use a grid search, which is uh, the most famous one. But actually, there are still a lot of optimizations for tuning our model. OK. OK. OK, and then our number eight is that we need to manage change. We have to oversee the changes in our data. Um, this is very important because it has something to do with flexibility. Because uh, most often, um, our certain algorithm may not be able to capture the whole data. As you could see in here, um, you have the yellow one, then we have the red one. Our yellow one may not be able to capture our, our data. So if if um, this certain uh, model does not give us the total picture, the whole picture of, of our data, then we have to uh, make some kind of adjustments for us to capture the whole thing and uh, for us to really understand the real situation or the real scenario behind our data. So it is for us to... Um, uh, device another model and then we're going to compare their their results it's so, a curve yeah yeah exactly so that is what we call the ROC or the receiver operating characteristics uh, especially when you are making some kind of classifications so when you classify one thing uh, from the other and you're going to use a different form say for example a uh, logistic regression may not uh, it's not really applicable if you would like to do some kind of um, classification. But uh, say, for example, we're going to use, this is uh, uh, an another form of classification. So so uh, it's better to really understand um, how different models can really uh, give you some um, results uh, for you to be able to give uh, better uh, prediction results and 
um, better classifications. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. And of course, we have to always think to stabilize our, our data. Why do we need to stabilize our data? So this is our number nine um, tip. Um, if it's under feet, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, from the very Over first, feet. yeah. So from the very first part of your um, uh, uh, study, um, bias can be there. So without you knowing that, it could be there. So if, for example, the moment you collect your data, it could be during the time you were too lazy to really collect as much as data as you want, but you just collect a certain data uh, that you like, and then you forgot to uh, collect other data, which is connected to the kind of data that you uh, already have. So with this case, we could really uh, see some kind of bias. So that, that means um, you just prefer to get certain data from this group of people, but for the other group of people, you, 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 you forgot. So that is with respect to our data collection. And also uh, another example is that when um, in our sampling, uh, I think we, we were done with that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with our reporting too. So when we, when we make reports of our data, we tend sometimes to not really report uh, the, the real picture because it could be that uh, as human as we are, we may think of something that is really in our favor and we, would, we don't want to, to hurt others. Um, so that's why we, we may sometimes uh, uh, be biased in, in presenting our reports. So with this, um, it's very better to really have a balanced generalizations. So with this one, uh, this is actually connected to the, the one that we said, uh, we have the overfitting and underfitting. So you have to always think of um, the proper generalization. So, so you have to be in balance so that you would be able to, uh, to shift between models with high bias and those with, with uh, high variance. So, and how to do that is that when your data have high variance, then we're going to use more data or subsets of, of, of features. So I think I have to repeat that when it's a really doing... important tips. It's a yeah, exactly. very, 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 very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if you you have a high variance, you can subset, no? and uh -huh. you find a, a, a sub subset that you are more um, homogeneous. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And That's it's correct. easily uh, predict than the the high variable. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if, if your data have high bias, then you can just use more features because it could be that your one feature is not enough, then you have to use more features. Okay, so also you're going to use the, the, the proper, the right um, evaluation me metric. So because this is very essential in se se selecting your models. Okay, so, but of course you during your um, data slicing, you could have already uh, chosen or selected the proper metrics to be used for your analysis. Very nice. Okay. And then, of course, the last one, um, we have to consider adding more features. Okay. So this is what I've said. Uh, we, we've said before, uh, you could start from simpler, but along the process, you could add more features if A and B may not be able to really give the proper picture of this particular uh, data set, then we could add more features. We could consider having three features. And then um, in the next one, maybe we could add uh, another one to make it uh, four features. So for example, for your training data, you just use one parameter. Um, for your uh, test data, maybe you could add uh, another one and maybe for some data in the future, maybe you could use um, another feature. So it has something to do with, again, uh, we're going to adjust our model, okay? So model should not be, uh, should not be just uh, alone. 
So it means that you're going to visit it, revisit it, check it, or it could be that you are going to change it. Okay, so it's a really good tip because it's uh, and uh, I will talk about uh, in, in my age, it was a trans transform variable, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's called feature engineer. If you... Yeah, feature engineering. <laughs> More sophisticated, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's really important because uh, I will talk about a uh, uh, project that I worked. Yeah, it was okay. my 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 when I finished the university. Né, I did a. Mm -hmm. uh, a monography. I don't know how I say GT in English, <laughs> but uh, was about predict uh, um, prices of uh, of house. Yeah. Ah, so okay. I had uh, a lot of features of the the house. Nah, yeah, mm. Bath, uh, number of bathroom, number of uh, uh, number of uh, met uh, met. Ma metrifications yes of the of the the house and the and the others of uh, that uh, was in turn of the house yeah but uh, mm. at brazil we have a uh, ibda yeah so uh, i i collect uh, data from them and about uh, collect of garbage uh ez8 yeah it's mm. uh a developer uh, uh, indicator human, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. because, because of uh, uh, the 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 regions uh, cons consumers, yeah, consum mm -hmm. cons consumptions, yeah, consumption. yeah, and uh, and it bring uh, a lot of a cure a cures uh, to Accuracy. my module, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's uh, adding more feature, yeah. Feature engineer, yeah. Yeah, and uh, bring uh, a lot of features that uh, we we are out out of the data, yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, in, uh, bring more accuracy to to modeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. exactly, exactly. Very, very nice. Very. Okay. Okay. I appreciate so much uh, your presentation. Well, thank you so much. Thank you thank so much. Thank you too. Yeah. Uh, so my student Alex, excellent. Felipe do Amaral, nice. Nuno Araújo, a paper. Ele falou a, a paper é monografia. <laughs> I tried to say the paper. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's awesome a presentation, yeah. E, and yeah. you. Uh, I will say to, to people add you, yeah, to mm -hmm. your channel, né? Digitally, wow. yeah. Can you spell for uh, it's on the, the describe of the video, yeah? So people yeah. add, add the, the he, he is very good teacher, as you can could see, yeah. Oh, thank so, you. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I. I regress, né? I regress you for for the presentation and come to to talk about machine learning with us, yeah. Uh, bring your uh, uh, learning about uh, years, yeah. And wow, it, okay. it's a very very good thing, yeah. It's uh, shows your humbly, yeah. It's oh, thank you. Very very nice. Thank, thank you, you very much. And uh, uh, I will uh, take recado. Uh, uh, esqueci como é que é recado em inglês, mas enfim. So I will talk that uh, the, certif the certify is on the, the form. Yeah, you can pro uh, can subscribe to the form and uh, we will generate the certification yeah and the we will generate a certification to joseph either okay thank you very much so you are welcome always you want to come back yeah
So, thank you very much. And uh, good morning, yeah? <laughs> wake, wake the early to talk with us, né? Woke your... <laughs> ok. So, uh, thank you. And obrigado aí, pessoal. Valeu aí pela, pela presença, né? Desculpa aí pelo inglês. Sorry for my English. <laughs> And uh, see you at the other time, ok? Ok. Thank you. Sucesso. Valeu, pessoal. Tchau, tchau. Até a próxima. Valeu.